Today, I've got a fun problem from the Simon Moraes Mathematical Competition. I'm not sure if I've pronounced that correctly. Apologies if I haven't. A, B, and C are real numbers greater than 1, satisfying the floor of A times B equals the floor of B times C equals the floor of C times A. We want to prove that A, B, and C are all the same. And if you've not seen this floor function before, it denotes the largest, I think that's supposed to say largest, largest integer that is less than or equal to X. So, for example, the floor of 4.2 is the largest integer smaller than or equal to 4.2 which of course is four. So basically rounding your number down. Do give this problem a go. I'm gonna dive right in with a solution here. I noticed that there's lots of symmetry going on. Lots of times I can swap the letters and get the same equation. So it wouldn't surprise me if my solution involved using the symmetry of this, and it does. Let's firstly make an observation by just rearranging the first part here. So we've got floor of A, times b equals floor of b times c. Just a simple rearrangement there gives me that b over the floor of b equals c over the floor of a. Okay, cool. Now, b over the floor of b, what can I say about that? Well, b is a real number bigger than one. So b is at least the floor of b. But in particular, since b is bigger than one, I know that the floor of b is gonna be at least one as well. And so if I use that, and just divide both sides here by the floor of B, I get B over the floor of B is at least one. Great. And so that means because these two things are equal, I get that C over the floor of A is at least one. And so therefore C is at least the floor of A. Cool. I can go one step further with this. We know that the floor of A is an integer. And in particular, it's an integer which is less than or equal to C. And so therefore, I know that the floor of C must be at least the floor of A. Because remember, the floor of C is the biggest integer smaller than C, and so, or smaller than or equal to C. And since the floor of A is an integer smaller than or equal to C, the biggest integer must be at least that. It could be that, or it could be bigger. So we get that the floor of C is at least the floor of A. Okay, but that was using these first two equations here. If instead I was to use these two equations, I could use some extremely similar logic um, and I could get that um, A is, or the floor of A is bigger than or equal to the floor of B. And then finally, if I was to use these two equations here, I could get that the floor of B is at least the floor of C. And the floor of C is therefore at least the floor of C. And so everything in the middle must be the same. And so therefore, I can deduce that the floor of A equals the floor of B equals the floor of C. That's quite cool. So A, B, and C all have the same floors. Why does that mean that they are all the same? Well, if I just call whatever this is alpha, again, I know that alpha is positive. In fact, it's at least one, but in particular, it's positive. Then I get alpha B equals alpha C equals alpha A for my equation, and I can just divide through by alpha and get that A equals B equals C. And that would solve our problem.